Hello. This video continues the series of training videos into the morphometric analysis of bone. Here we are looking at the cortical bone of the distal mouse femur. We are going to look at a method for measuring the basic cortical morphometric parameters including separately the periosteal and endosteal surface area. To begin with we binarize the bone. This particular data set has been delineated by automatic uh, software separation of trabecula from cortical bone. However, this method can be applied equally whether the delineation is manual or automatic. In this case, we will not set an ROI because the software will do this automatically. So looking at the threshold, at the third page of CT Analyzer, we will set a value of 85. Note that the threshold value for cortical bones should always be higher than that of trabecular. It should be such as to include the internal porosity, but not to extend too high to cause too much uh, noise to appear in the bone uh, volume. Here we will choose a value of 85. We now move to the custom processing part of uh, CT Analyzer. Now, in the custom processing page, we have the task list where we can add the items to run in an automated sequence or macro, and in the internal list, all the available operations. Now, on the right hand side, there are three image views the image, the image inside the ROI, and the ROI itself. Now, here we have set no ROI, so the ROI page is a solid white square. We begin by running threshold click on the item under internal and run it individually clicking the run plugin button. We choose global and 85 to 255 and continue. Now the function that we are going to use to delineate the ROI is called shrink wrap because shrink wrap will wrap the ROI around the outer boundary and will then allow the measurement of the periosteal boundary and indirectly the measurement of the endosteal boundary also. So shrink wrap is down here and we run that and we will run it in 2D space shrinking from the perimeter. We'll come on to this function of stretch over holes in a moment. Now having run shrink wrap the ROI now coincides with the outer boundary of the bone and the analysis results list the ROI, surface area and perimeter and these are now synonymous with the periosteal perimeter and by subtraction we can then easily obtain the endosteal perimeter also. However, there is a problem. Here and there, there are holes in the cortical bone such as blood vessel entry canals. Here is the largest one in this data set and you can see that the ROI is sucked inside that hole. Now, we can prevent that happening by activating the subfunction stretch over holes to shrink wrap. So first we run the reload plugin, re-establish the original region of interest and run shrink wrap again. Now before we run it, how large is the hole over which we have to stretch? Well, if we measure it with a measuring tool, we find that it's in the vicinity of 20 pixels. So to be on the safe side, we will run shrink wrap, 2D space, choose stretch over holes and set a diameter of about 30 or 32 pixels. Now we find that the ROI is successfully stretched over the hole of the cortical section. There is another problem however, here on this pay level there's a little spike the outside which is an artifact of a small dot in the original image. So we begin the analysis by running a despeckle function such as sweep in 3D space to remove loose dots and then reapplying the shrink wrap. We will have a perimeter unaffected by these small particles that sometimes can exist around the outside of the cortical data set. So let's 
populate our task list for the analysis of cortical bone. We start with threshold. To add an item to the uh, task list, you choose the item, whatever it is, and it from the internal list and click on the plus button at the top. Clicking plus adds that item to the list. And the operations are carried out simply in the order in which they are listed, and each item requires configuration. To configure it, just double click and open it up. We start with global thresholding with the value 85, then we despeckle with sweep, 3D space. Secondly, we despeckle again, remove white black speckles, small noise dots from the, the bone itself, 3D space, let's say 10 voxels. Now we will apply the shrink wrap from the outside. In 2D space, stretch over holes, 32 pixels. Now this value might be smaller if you don't have such large holes in your cortical bone. And then we will run the 3D analysis. Now to save time for our demonstration, we will deselect the thickness and separation as these take a longer time to calculate. Remember, when you are running 3D analysis, choose your units and uh, nomenclature under preferences and general. You can choose bone ASPMR nomenclature or general scientific if you are looking at non-bone material. Also the unit should be set to normally to millimeters for morphometric analysis. Scientific notation means using the notation e to the power which gives all results the equal decimal precision. So we will run our task list. The starting situation is no is uh, let us first reload the original ROI which is basically undefined and go back to the situation of the unbinarized image. Now we run the task list. And it is complete. And here is the ROI. Now the important thing here is that the ROI perimeter, the result output as the ROI, or in the case of the bone parameter names, the tissue perimeter, which means the same as the ROI perimeter. Now this is now the same as the periosteal perimeter. And the endosteal perimeter is simply the total bone perimeter minus the periosteal. Now we can refine our results in one particular way because the bone is full of pores and these will also provide perimeter. If we want a, an improved measurement of the endosteal and periosteal surfaces we can remove those pores. We choose despeckle again and we run remove black speckles, this time in 2D space, anything less than let's say 200 pixels and continue. The reason we choose 2D rather than 3D is many of these holes are blood vessel holes and they, continue, they communicate with the outside, so in 3D they would not be removed. So here is our despeckled cortical boundary. And we could, and our region of interest is still intact, we could reapply the 3D analysis and this time get more precise values of the endosteal and periosteal surfaces. Note, by the way, that the cortical porosity should not be discarded. It is an important, important parameter, but it needs to be analysed by a separate analysis which preserves the pores. And this is the subject of a second demonstration video of cortical bone analysis. So let's have a look at our results. Go to the output report file and click on the open. And we can open in Excel the uh, results of our analysis. OK. Now, finally, I will complete this uh, description by a note on the interpretation of the results. So the parameters have standard names but you need to understand that you have freedom to rename the parameters accordingly depending on what it is that is measured. For example we have what is called tissue volume. What does this mean? This is the volume 
of all the bone inside the ROI, within the periosteum, because the word tissue is being used here in the ASBMR parameters to mean ROI. So, going back to Excel, um, tissue volume can be renamed as follows. So, what are the parameter names for cortical bone? The tissue volume is the volume inside the periosteum. And the bone volume is the cortical bone volume. Now, what is the end volume of the medulla? The medullary volume, and we will insert another line here we will create another parameter that we will call medullary volume. And what is that? The medullary volume is equal to the volume inside the periosteum minus the bone volume. And so you see that the volume inside the periosteum is 5 millimeters cubed and that of the medulla is 3.7. I put it in the wrong column, but there we are. So those are the important parameters. We've got the volume inside the periosteum, and we've got basically the volume inside the endosteum, or the medullary volume, which means the same thing. Now, these two parameters are important because they tell us in the case where we have a change of cortical volume, whether there has been a net bone formation or resorption on the periosteal surface and the endosteal surface respectively. Note that the volume enclosed by the periosteum and endosteum is a more useful parameter than the perimeter itself because it's not affected by irregularity. For example, irregularity of the endosteal surface caused by trabecular insertions. This irregularity can make the endosteal perimeter larger than the periosteal and introduce variation which confuses the results. But looking at volumes inside the periosteum and endosteum allows us to establish the mechanism of change of cortical bone in a morphometric study.